Hi. We're your local high-speed internet and cable provider. Are you looking for a fast, reliable internet connection? A large selection of your favorite HDTV channels? With 24-7 access to the best customer support technicians? All at a fair price? Fuck you. You'll take what we give you. You'll have the option of choosing from several of our completely unwarranted rip-offs, including internet speeds up to 200 times slower than Korea, at twice the price, TV packages with over 500 channels, 90% of what you can view, and we guarantee a plethora of hidden fees. Then, our barely trained technicians will come to install your services somewhere between the hours of 8am and 10pm, knock once while you're in the shower, and promptly leave. And once we do finally get your service up and running, it'll be down and limping within three hours. Indefinitely. Why, you ask? Simple. We are part of what is called an oligopoly. It's like a monopoly, only legal. See, in closed-door meetings with four or five of the other major providers, we've secretly agreed not to have differing prices, allowing us to completely eliminate any competition and collectively raise our prices to optimum cockbag levels. Because we here at your local high-speed internet and cable provider don't believe in customer satisfaction. We believe in money. Pools of money. Looking for a better deal? You can all gobble down our balls. You're paying for it. Your local high-speed internet and cable provider. You won't like it, and there's no other option. How you doing? This is Joe again from Pot Talk. And we're here once again... <clears throat> We want to free all marijuana prisoners, and we don't want any more going in jail. And we believe Woodstock would be a great place to start. We think Jeremy Wilbur should tell the local Woodstock police to stop work wasting money on chasing kids in the woods smoking joints. So, uh, but we uh, we looked up some stuff on the internet that uh, I'm going to have Paula read. That's very interesting stuff. If you want to know why our kids are going to jail for smoking marijuana um, and who's, who's the ones that are fighting and paying politicians to keep these laws in place, Paul is going to read this to you. But It's five top special interest groups lobbying to keep marijuana illegal. Last year, over 850,000 people in America were arrested for marijuana-related crimes. Despite public opinion, the medical community, and human rights, experts all moving in favor of relaxing marijuana prohibition laws, little has changed in terms of policy. So despite all of that, little has changed. <clears throat> there have been many great books and articles detailing the history of the drug war. Part of America's fixation with keeping the leafy green plant illegal is rooted in cultural and political clashes from the past. However, we at Republic Report think it's worth showing that there are entrenched interest groups that are spending large sums of money to keep our broken drug laws on the books. Okay? One, police unions. Why does that not surprise us? Number one, police unions. Police departments across the country have become dependent on federal drug war grants to finance their budget. In March, we published a story revealing that a police union lobbyist in California coordinated the effort to defeat Proposition 19, a ballot measure in 2010 to legalize marijuana, while helping his police department clients collect tens of millions in federal marijuana eradication grants. And it's not just in California. Federal lobbying disclosures show that other police union lobbyists have pushed for stiffer penalties for marijuana-related crimes nationwide. Yeah, now, uh, <coughs> did you people get that? The police unions are financing all these campaigns to keep marijuana illegal. Why? Because the police profit from this. They get money from grants from the federal government, and um, all the money that they seize when they, when they pick your pocket, when they catch you with some marijuana and take your money because they, every time they've arrested me, whatever money I had, 
they took it, yet I was never charged with sales of marijuana, but they managed to confiscate my money every time to keep me down and keep me broke, and that's what they're doing to everybody on marijuana laws. Um, you want to read the next one, and then I'll c comment on that one also. Number two, private prisons corporations. Private prison corporations make millions by incarcerating people who have been imprisoned for drug crimes, including marijuana. As Republic Report's Matt Stoller noted last year, Corrections Corporation of America, one of the largest for-profit prison companies, revealed in a regulatory filing that continuing the drug war is part and parcel to their business strategy. Prison companies have spent millions bankrolling pro-drug war politicians and have used secretive front groups like American Legislative Exchange Council to pass harsh sentencing requirements for drug crimes. So you catch that again. The, the private prisons corporation, that's a, a private prison corporation for making money, is making lots of money off locking up your children and um, taking them in, and locking up people for marijuana. And in doing so, these guys push, to pay all the politicians, they donate to their campaigns, which shows that the politicians' campaigns are all corrupt. They're not watching out for the best interest of the people, uh, since we know, and it's been proven, that marijuana does no harm, that marijuana is a, a very good medicine, and that um, you, we don't have violence, we don't have all the problems with marijuana, that we do with most of the pharmaceutical drugs. I'd like to remind you that all these people, the, the, the guy who did the shooting in uh, Connecticut who killed all those kids, he was high on pharmaceuticals. Um, and most of these shootings that we've had that they're saying take the guns away were high on pharmaceuticals. Yet the private prison corporation aren't, lo aren't pushing to get the pharmaceutical company board of directors or CEOs put in jail, um, yet they're willing to go out there and grab your kid and throw him in jail because big money makes money off the incarcerations. We have, we have more people in, the, in prison in the United States than any other country in the world per hundred people. Um, so private prison corporations are pushing it's time for you people out there to push back. We want all marijuana prisoners released, and we don't want any more in. Let's move on to the next one. Number three, alcohol and beer companies. Fearing competition for the dollars Americans spend on leisure, alcohol and tobacco interests have lobbied to keep marijuana out of reach. For instance, the California beer and beverage distributors contributed campaign contributions to a committee set up to prevent marijuana from being legalized and taxed. Well, we're against legaliza legalization and taxation. We're for repeal of a law that should have never been. To legalize it means that they're going to license it. And believe me, they're not going to license it for you or me. They're going to license for big corporations, and they're going to tax you when the big corporations sell it to you. So I'm against legalization and taxation. I want repeal or abolishment of a law that should have never been. And um, now we got the, 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 beer, compa the beer companies uh, and alcohol companies are pushing uh, to have marijuana made illegal and to keep it illegal and to keep people going to jail, yet most of the accidents that happen um, in this country are from drunk drivers. And uh, yet we don't see them saying we should put more people who drink in jail. Not that I believe people who drink should be put in jail either, but um, it, it's pretty hypocritical for the alcohol people to be saying a uh, lobbying Congress and those people to have stiffer penalties for marijuana. It's outrageous what they're doing here, and uh, you people out there in television land should be taking, all of you should be taking a stand and doing what you can to change these laws and uh, say, we don't want the police uh, 
pay in the legislature so that the police can make more money. That's a conflict of interest. Um, okay, let's move on to the next one. Number four, pharmaceutical corporations. Like the sin industries listed above, pharmaceutical interests would like to keep marijuana illegal so Americans don't have the option of cheap medical alternatives to their products. Howard Wool Woolridge, a retired police officer who now lobbies the government to relax marijuana prohibition laws, told Republic Report that next to police unions, the second biggest opponent on Capitol Hill is Big Pharma because marijuana can replace everything from Advil to Vicodin and other expensive pills. Yeah, and not just that, um, the people could grow it in their own backyard so they don't have to go to big pharmaceutical companies to buy their garbage. Now, um, if you got big pharmaceutical companies put paying money to lock up our kids and to give bigger sentences, and they're the ones that are financing these politicians' campaigns. Don't you think maybe you shouldn't vote for these politicians? Um, you people out there keep electing the same criminals every year, every year. And those criminals are, let me tell you, the marijuana laws have been used to take children away from parents who smoke joints. Young kids who get arrested for marijuana can't get a college grant, can't get loans to go to college. Um, these laws are just not just the incarcerations, but the laws themselves are keeping people down and uh, destroying a lot of young people's futures. Um, not to mention that uh, when you've been arrested for marijuana, if you've been arrested for more than an ounce, you can get a felony. And if you've got a felony on your record, a whole lot of jobs that would have been available to that young kid who got busted with some marijuana are now not available. So it's, it's, it also creates a class war where you got the rich and powerful who don't go to jail because they're politically connected and then you got um, the young kids who aren't politically connected having their lives destroyed even if they don't go to jail. And we got to do something about big pharmaceutical corporations lobbying um, Congress to keep a natural medicine from, uh, from you and I, from anybody. You could grow it in your own backyard. It's been proven that marijuana cures cancer and many, many diseases. I, I would recommend you people go out, go on the internet and look up Rick, uh, Rick Simpson, Run From the Cure, full version, and you'll see all the amazing medical miracles that, are, that, are, that have been attributed to marijuana. If you go on the internet and start just researching it, you're going to see how many people have said, I've taken the extracted oil from marijuana and I've cured so many things. Um, so uh, big pharmaceutical companies would prefer to sell you uh, poisons that are going to kill your liver and kill you, rot your kidneys and do all kinds of damage to your body, but you won't have a headache. Or they might give you something for depression that after you take it for a while, you wind up committing suicide or getting a gun and killing a whole bunch of kids in school. Um, that's for what big pharmaceutical companies are offering you. Yet, Excuse me, it's not runfromthecure.org, it's run from the cure full version. I just put that up on YouTube. Yeah, run from the cure, run, full version. Run from the cure. Christian Lorette did that documentary, and he was making a play on words. Usually they have the American Cancer Society doing run for the cure, run for the cure, you know, and they, and they get money together. And so what the play on words was is that Rick Simpson went to the uh, Canadian Cancer Society in the UN. He went to every organization around, and all they wanted to do is run from the cure. Okay. I, I'm going to re, rerun this just a little bit. Now, the five big cor the five big money backers to keep marijuana illegal and to keep the harsh laws are the police unions, private prison corporations, alcohol and beer companies, pharmaceutical corporations, and the last one is police unions. Now, that if, guard unions. 
Uh, oh, I'm sorry, Pri prison guard unions, I'm sorry. Um, now, if that, isn't, if, if that doesn't tell you people that we're living in a police state, that the prison guard union, the police union, and the private prison corporations are, the, are three of the main people, our main groups, pushing to keep it illegal. Um, all of them profit from the suffering of uh, innocent people who've done no harm to anyone. Uh, on the prison guard unions, prison guard unions have a vested interest in keeping people behind bars, just like for-profit prison companies. In 2008, California Correctional Peace Officers Association spent a whopping $1 million to defeat a measure that would have reduced sentences and parole times for nonviolent drug offenders while emphasizing drug treatment over prison. But, you know, they'll just get the, the, tr the treatment scam thing going, too. It's all about collecting the federal money. Right. There's 40%. And, 40%. and the prison guard union, it's like maybe we have too many prisons in this country, and a lot of these prison guards should be laid off and go get real jobs like everybody else. You know, they all want to be on the government pay, on the government dole, and we're the people paying for that. When you pay taxes... You're the ones that's paying for all these prison guards. And how many towns around here, all around here, the towns were screaming, we want a prison, we want a prison, it's going to create jobs, it's going to create jobs. Yeah, well, it might create jobs, but it's des destroying the culture of our country. It's destroying the youth of our country, and it's time for it to stop. Um, you want to read the next one? Yeah, this is about lobbyists. This is uh, also written by the same guy, Lee Fang, and it's exclusive. Uh, why can't you smoke pot? Because lobbyists are getting rich off of the war on drugs. And this is about police association lobbyist John Lovell. John Lovell, or Lovell, John Lovell is a lobbyist who makes a lot of money from making sure from making sure you can't smoke a joint. That's his job. He's a lobbyist for the Police Association in Sacramento, and he's a driving force behind grabbing federal dollars to shut down the American marijuana, in, the, the California marijuana industry. I'll get to the evidence on this important story in a bit, but first, some context. At some point in the distant past, the war on drugs might have been popular, but not anymore. Uh, the polling is clear, but beyond that, the last three presidents have used illegal drugs. So why do we still put hundreds of thousands of people in steel cages for pot-related offenses? Well, there are many reasons, but one of them is, of course, money and politics. Corruption, whatever you want to call it, it's why you can't smoke a joint without committing a crime, Though, of course, you can ingest any number of pills or drinks completely within the law. Some of the groups who want to keep the drug illegal are police associations that want more members to pay more dues. One of the primary sources for cash for more policing activities are federal grants for penalizing illegal drug use, which helps pay for overtime, additional police officers, and equipment for the force. That's what Lovell does. He gets those grants. He also fights against democratic mechanisms to legalize drugs. In 2010, California considered Proposition 19, a measure to legalize marijuana and tax it as alcohol. The proposition gained more votes than Meg Whitman, the former eBay executive and Republican gubernatorial nominee that year, but failed to pass. Opponents of the initiative ran ads, organized rallies, and spread conspiracy theories about billionaire George Soros to confuse voters. <clears throat> well, we were never too enthusiastic about the $140 million George Soros put into California to legalize. Right, right to legalize. But we're, we're we don't abolition trust George Soros at all. We're, we're abolitionists. Yeah. You want to no, talk ahead. about that? Okay. Okay, Lavelle managed uh, the opposition campaign against Proposition 19. He told Time magazine that he was pushing against the initiative because the last thing we need is yet another mind-altering substance to be legalized. Now I'll jump in. Okay, jump. A another mind-altering substance to be legalized, yet 
you can get all kinds of poisons at your local pharmacy that the pharmaceutical companies are putting out there. Very few people understand the pharmaceutical companies basically control the schools that our doctors go to. So when our doctors, when young people go to school to become a doctor, they're being taught in school, well, if someone has a heart attack, you have to give them this particular drug or this particular thing. And if the doctor learns at school and he, you know, doctors like to think, oh, I'm a doctor, I'm superior, what do you know about health, what do you know, even when it's you they're talking to and you're there <laughs> looking for help. And they treat you like you have no knowledge because they have a diploma that was given to them by some medical college that was funded by some pharmaceutical college. So that's why when you go to a doctor, a doctor's going to say, oh, you got something wrong with you? I got just a pill, yeah. you know? <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> right, and, right, and I don't care what you say, and if you think herbs or teas are going to help you, you are a primitive, and you don't know, and I'm a doctor, and I got a license, and, and besides, that's all your, your insurance company will pay for, and it's all that the, if you're on welfare and you've got Medicaid, Medicaid will only give you the pills that the pharmaceutical companies, yeah, they are ripping off so much money from you people and giving you stuff, such poisons, when there's a natural medicine that you could, everyone could grow in their own backyard, and we say everyone should be able to grow marijuana, and it shouldn't be licensed, it shouldn't be taxed, we should ab abolish the law that should have never been. The law was made on fraud. We, everyone knows, everybody knows Anslinger lied to Congress every step of the way, to, and, and they had secret meetings, um, and then they came out and did the Tax Act, which turned out to be illegal, and then they did it again, and then they put it in the hands of the DEA, and the DEA said, well, we're going to declare it a Schedule I substance, and Schedule I says it has no medical value. Well, that's what the DEA says, but our government has nine patents on the medical use of marijuana. Um, if they have nine patents that the government has, has itself for the medical use of marijuana, how can they keep it in Schedule I, which says no medical value? But they're putting us in jail for it, while in the meantime, all these pharmaceutical companies are trying to make the same medicine synthetically that you could get from a natural plant. And, and they're trying to make, some, like they already have one, called Marinol. And you can get Marinol from the pharmaceutical companies, which they say is similar to THC, which you get in marijuana plants. So um, what they're saying is you can't smoke a natural weed that, grow, that could grow in your backyard, but we'll give you the synthetic stuff that's, the, they, they claim it's the same, but everybody that I've known who's taken it as medicine, who's gotten it as medicine, says that the, the natural oil is so much superior, yet pharmaceutical companies are trying to control it. And that's one of the reasons it's illegal, and if they could find a way to make it, they would legalize their product and your kids would still be going to jail for a joint. So it's time for all you people out there in television land to become active, to start demanding change in this country. Um, our country's being destroyed by the World Bank, by corrupt politicians, by corrupt judges, and by police who are overstepping their uh, constitutional authority. It's time to, for a big change. Um, we're going to go, well, let's go back to this. Pick up where you left off. But Republic Report reviewed lobbying contracts during the Prop 19 fight and found that Lovell's firm was paid over $386,000 from a wide array of police associations, including the California Police Chiefs Association. Uh, while Lavelle may have may contend that he sincerely opposes the idea of marijuana legalization, he has constructed an entire business model predicated on pot prohibition. Shortly after President Obama's stimulus program passed, uh, 
Lovell went to work channeling the taxpayer money for California into drug war programs. According to documents Republic Report obtained from the Police Chiefs Association, Lovell helped local departments apply for drug war money from the federal government. Here's a copy of one letter sent to a police department in Lassen County, California. There is big money in marijuana prohibition. Uh, Lovell uh, represented a police association in a bid to steer some $2.2 million into a marijuana suppression program. In 2009 and 2010, California police uh, associations sought a seven million, seven and a half million chunk of federal money for police to conduct a campaign against marijuana planting program. Let me jump in here well, again. At least that's more honest than jump chopping here. it up after you've jump done in, all the buds again. yourself. But if the police chiefs association uh, are are looking for seven hundred seven and a half million dollars um, for, for in federal money so that they can conduct campaigns to eliminate marijuana planting. but planting but it's not just that uh, they also get to seize if you get if you're growing marijuana on your land if you have a couple of plants in your backyard and they come in they can seize your property so not only are they getting a big chunk of your tax dollars uh, to do this, uh, the federal government is, is, is giving them money so that they can come in and raid people's houses and the police get to keep the assets that they seize. So uh, what they're doing is getting funding to be pirates, to be thieves, to come and steal your property. And uh, it's all for marijuana. Um, almost everybody I know who's ever been busted has had money taken from them, has had property seized, had their cars taken, and uh, none of them have ever gotten it back. And uh, you see the local police all riding around in nice cars because when they seize a car, then they put it up for like their own little auction and their buddy can buy a brand new car for almost nothing. Um, so th w this is police acting as criminals acting like they're doing something and you people out there are being scammed every kind of way and paying for it. All right, go ahead, pick up. <clears throat> the anti-marijuana money went directly into the paychecks of many officers. For example, police departments in Shasta, Sisiku, and Tehama counties formed a North California eradication team to receive $550,000 in grants that helped pay for overtime, a new officer, and flight operations. The total amount awarded was $550,000 to be split between Shasta, Siskiyou, and Tehama counties, which make up the Northern California Marijuana Eradication Team, NorCal Met. Broken down in the agenda worksheet, the Sheriff's Office is expecting to spend $20,000 on flight operations, $94,000 for the full-time deputy salary and benefits, $16,000 for the administration assistant salary and benefits, and $29,000 to cover up to 666.29 hours of overtime. Let me jump in again. Um, and they run up overtime. That's the police out there busting more and more people. Um, it, this this has got has to stop. And the only way this can stop is if you people out there in television land decide that you've had enough. And um, it's not just we're just covering right now the marijuana stuff. And uh, and uh, it's so outrageous that they're they're doing it in so many ways. Once again, I would like to point out. 14 and a half million homes have been repossessed by the banks in this country. That's 14 and a, mil and a half million families put on the streets. And um, our country is being destroyed from every different direction. And if, um, when, they, when they have 14 and a million half 
14 and a half million families, they're going to be taking more children. So that's more of uh, child protective services coming in and saying, well, you got no place to live, you're living in a car with your kids, or you don't have money to support your kids, so we're going to take them away. And that's another whole industry. Um, we're going to go into that on other shows, but it just shows how criminal our whole government has become and how we've become a police state that even the police now are paying the politicians to make laws that benefit the police. No longer do the people have any say-so until you people out there start standing up and demanding change. Pick up here. The federal anti-marijuana honeypot might have dried up if Proposition 19 had passed, legalizing marijuana would have generated billions in tax revenue for the state of California, while also reducing victimless crime pro uh, prosecutions. But for lobbyists like Lovell, legalization was a direct assault on hundreds of thousands of dollars in potential fees for helping to solicit taxpayer money for his clients. Police associations also contributed about a hundred, a uh, hundred thousand, or is that a, a million? It looks like a hundred thousand. Five hundred. To a campaign account used to coordinate opposition to Proposition 19. Of the 386,000 in fees paid by police associations to Lovell during 2009 and 2010, Status update reports reviewed by Republic Report reveal that Lovell worked as a number worked on a number of issues from advocacy against Proposition 19 to channeling grants and monitoring legislation. And what we're talking about here in California, this is uh, this is mostly about California, but it's the same here in New York and it's the same in every state. When you think about the amount of money. This is the, just the money that they're doing in California. In New York, I'm sure they're spending a lot more than this in New York State. Um, and it's the prison guards. It's, it's the same five or six different groups that are all fighting to keep marijuana illegal and to keep uh, nonviolent prisoners in jail because they're profiting from it. And they're profiting in so many ways. We've done shows on how they, they can tap into... When you were born, they gave you a birth certificate. When they gave you a birth certificate, they didn't tell you that there was a trust account uh, registered to that birth certificate. And uh, according to Rod Class, who's done the research, and I'm sure he's right, that for every child born, there's a million eight hundred thousand dollars put in an account, in a credit account. 1930s money too. 1.8. Right, w w right, right. But um, in a credit account for, your, for, for you under your name, and when you sign, when you go in to get a loan and you sign a paper, money is drawn from that account that you don't even know you have. It, you know, when they took away the gold in this country and we had no form of money, they had to give the people something. So they gave, what they did was they gave all the people credit. But they didn't tell you you had credit. What they did was hid it away and made uh, the Secretary of the Treasury uh, in charge of your, uh, he's the executor of your money. And every time you sign a piece of paper, if you sign a bank loan, they use that signature to go to the Federal Reserve, tell the Federal Reserve, well, take it out of this person's credit account, print up $100,000, and then they give it to the bank. Then the bank turns around and, and gives you that money, which is money out of your account, and tells you you have to pay back a loan because they gave you money, but the bank never really gave you money. The same thing when we lock up kids. One of the reasons it's so profitable to lock up kids is because all these kids have a, a trust account in their name under their birth certificate and when they lock them up they can tap into it and they can tap into what was it ten thousand dollars a day ten thousand dollars a day so not only are they making money the ways that you normally know they're making money but 
They're also getting $10,000 a day from these kids' trust accounts. And if, the, if these kids had access to their trust accounts, they could go to college, they could own a home. Um, the, the federal government, owned, when they lost the gold in, in 1933 under Franklin Delano Roosevelt, and they went over to the uh, Federal Reserve notes, that what they did was uh, they had to say they owed the American people since they were, tr in tr they were trustees of the American people's money. So as trustees, they owed us that money that they swindled and stole. They stole our trust, the, the trust of the country, which was the gold, but they gave us credit uh, for the gold that they stole. But then they didn't actually give us the credit. They put it in a trust account, didn't tell us about it, and they tap into it every time you sign your name. If you go, if you go to court, you've been convicted guilty. When you sign that piece of paper, the court has what they call the CRISP report, Court Registry Investment System. And not only are you paying a fine, but they put it, they're taking the, the, the paperwork that you sign and they're selling it on Wall Street because your signature is worth money and they can tap into that trust account that you didn't even know you had. And um, they're stealing the wealth of our nation every kind of way possible. The politicians know what I'm saying is the truth. The judges know what I'm saying is the truth. The only ones that don't know what I'm, that I'm saying the truth are you people out there in television land. So I suggest that you people start educating yourselves because if you don't, we're all going to be in concentration camps because that's next. Go ahead. Of course, police associations aren't the only interest group with a stake in maintaining broken drug laws. The beer industry, alcohol corporations, and prison guard interests also contributed money to help Lavelle stop Proposition 19. Howard Woolridge, a retired police officer who now helps push for legalization as a citizen advocate, told Republic Report that drug company lobbyists also fight to keep marijuana illegal because they view pot as a low-cost form of competition. This post originally described Lovell as a police union lobbyist. It has been corrected to note that he represents law enforcement associations, not labor unions. We regret the error. Yeah. Um, so anyway, we've pretty much told you people what's going on uh, on, on, mo on most of our shows. Now it's up to you people out there to start getting active, to start educating yourselves to the law, educate yourselves to what's going on, educate yourselves to the corruption. It's time that we get uh, these corrupt judges off the bench. Um, prosecutors have so, to, so much power. It's time that we level the playing field and take some of that power away. Um, I said on one of the other shows, uh, a lot of the prosecutors are all bragging that they get uh, a 98% conviction rate. And they say, oh, and elect me, elect me, I get a 98% conviction rate. If you elect them, you're electing real criminals because in order to get a 98% conviction rate, they have to violate people's rights, they have to deny people due process, they have to lie, they have to do so much illegal shit to get that 98% uh, conviction rate. And then they tell you, well, you can get uh, a lawyer. Well, if the prosecutors are getting a 98% conviction rate, that means that no matter what lawyer you get, you only got a 2% chance of winning. Um, so what? And the lawyer gets paid even if you even if he loses the case. So the bar association has this nice little money-making club where. The judge gets money, he gets a commission. Uh, for every person he puts in jail, he gets money, goes into his retirement fund. So that makes a judge not an impartial person. It makes it, he, it, he wants to put people in for as many, every time he gives someone five years, he gets a bigger bonus. And uh, the prosecutor gets a cut out of that, and the police get a cut out of that, and the poor kid that's standing in court, he, he 
he, he gets a public defender who gets paid whether he wins or loses and hardly talks to the kid. If the, so many of my friends, when they've gone to court for marijuana charges, have said to the, I, before they go in, to say to the lawyer, I want you to say this, I want you to say this, I want you to say this. And then when the lawyer goes into court, the lawyer don't say any of the things that they were told to say, which don't get on the record, so it can't be appealed. The, the, the prosecutors, the judges, and the lawyers are all profiting from the suffering of the American people. It's yeah. very sad. I want to go on and read. A, can I go on about the broadband? Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay. U.S. Representative congratulates Iowa community for Muni Network. Uh, this was Saturday, the 9th of March, 2013. Uh, Republican Tom Latham uh, recently recognized the city of Indianola on the U.S. House floor to recognize the community's municipal network. On February 15th, he spoke to the body about Indianola's recent certification as connected by Connected Nation and Connected Iowa. Let me jump in again here just for a second. Uh, this community municipal network, um, there are communities now setting it up so that they have their own local kind of cable system uh, with fiber optics and it, it's community based where everybody in the community gets plugged in for a reasonable price and uh, from what we've heard about it lightning fast speed lightning fast speeds on your computers 10 times faster than what you're getting from the from the companies now and the big corporations and the big uh, people that supply this are really trying to stop it and um, we're going to find out more about this and try to educate the people of Woodstock because wouldn't it be nice in Woodstock if we had a community municipal network that everybody could t t tune into and everybody could be on at low cost and have sp sp 10 times faster speed on your uh, computers. And 10 times on the conservative side. It's, I've heard much, much faster than that. Okay, from his recognition speech as reported on Capital Words from the Sunlight Foundation. Mr. Speaker, I rise today to recognize the city of Indianola, Iowa for earning the Connected Programs Connected Certification. Indianola is the first community in the state of Iowa and the third in the country to garner this technology designation. You know, I have mixed feelings about certification, but let me continue. The connected certification is a title applied to communities that display top-tier proficiency in the access and utilization of broadband-supported technologies. This coveted certification is awarded by Connected Nation and its subsidiary, Connect Iowa, who advocate for broadband access on the state and national levels. The city of Indianola is one of more than 30 communities across Iowa actively participating in the Connected program and the first to become formally certified. Indianola has a team in place that has developed a comprehensive plan to increase broadband access by accessing the broadband landscape, identifying gaps, and establishing manageable goals. Attaining the Connected Certification adds to the long list of desirable attributes that make Indianola such a great place to raise a family or grow a business. Mr. Speaker, I commend the City of Indianola for its commitment to embracing and efficiently utilizing technology for the benefit of its residents and businesses. It's a great honor to represent the, citizen of Indianola, the citizens of Indianola and all of Warren County in the United States Congress. I know that my colleagues in the House will join me in congratulating the City of Indianola in being selected to receive this certification, and I wish the City and its people continued success in the future. I'm just saying, City of Indianola, watch out what you signed when you got that no, certification. But, well, <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I think it's a good thing myself. Um, but they already had a good thing going. 
It's, you know, what, what I'm thinking is there are these little pockets around the country that couldn't get uh, broadband put in, and so they scraped it together themselves, and they got broadband put in by themselves, and then pretty soon people in the bigger cities next door noticed, hey, you know, how come your speed is like much faster and it's much cheaper? What do you think, Randy? Oh, I got a lot of seat on this. Uh, Woodstock actually tried that uh, a number of years ago, and actually an independent company that was formed to provide fiber optics to Woodstock actually wired a portion of the hamlet. Verizon got so angry at the town of Woodstock that that's why we still don't have fiber optics here. They said that we were going to be the last people to ever get Fios because Woodstock actually had the audacity to try to build its own uh, fiber optic system and then get it linked to the rest of the network. Oh, do tell. And these oh, companies, do tell. these companies, that these, is these companies do throttle back the what you're saying. They throttle back the amount of speed that they give you. Yeah, yeah on their digital line. So yeah, it actually was tried here. Right. And we're mm -hmm. suffering the repercussions of corporate retaliation. Which is criminal what they're doing. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, we need more people. We're, we're suing and we're, we're fighting all these court cases and we need some other people out there to start uh, initiating court cases against uh, all these criminals, corrupt judges, corrupt police, um, it's time for you people out there to start fighting back. Now, I'm not saying pick up arms and do a revolution. I'm saying go into court and fight them. But before we go, in, go into court, it's time for the American people to, to bring our courts around to just. All, all the, most of the judges in Ulster County are criminals. They, they rule from the bench. They deny due process. They pick your pockets. It's time for you people to start voting all these judges out. And in Woodstock would be a real good place to start. The local two judges here got to go. We don't need them. We need honest judges, and we need judges that protect the rights and protect due process and not give warrants for whenever, whenever anybody wants one. Or, um, well, they don't even bother with warrants nowadays. Right, or they'll take, they'll take a, they'll take, if someone wants to go down and sign a complaint, they'll take that complaint and go and arrest somebody without any proofs or any facts. Um, we know a few people who've been in that situation in, the, in this town, where, and I know of a lot of cases in this town that when it came before the judge should have been thrown out. When you when when you look at the facts or you know a little bit about what's going on, you know this case should never go forward. But these judges profit from it, and they continue the case. Um, well, we're going to learn more when we follow the money trail. That the money trail, you you just it's just black and white. Let me go on to the Georgia bill to limit. Can, can I go on? Yeah, sure. Georgia bill to limit internet investment dies on House floor. Um, now you're going, well, why are we picking up these states all around? It's very interesting to see what happens with the Internet. And there are these little enclaves that have done some wonderful things around the country. One of the towns in Georgia did that, yeah. did this other thing where they have the whole town, everyone in the town hooked into the, to the network, to their own town network, and... It was paid, even if you lived the furthest place out from town, you paid the same place, same price as someone who lived right in town. So it was equal across the board. Everybody paid the same amount, and they paid less, much, much less, much, much less than they would pay, than you're paying for cable right now. Because they're probably not securitizing and this. you got ten times the speed. At least. We should bring that into Woodstock. The same thing. We're going to find out more and give you more information and more right. facts on this. Right. But if, if you could have ten times the speed on your computer uh, for a lot less of the price than you're paying for the cable, why keep getting ripped off by Time Warner when when the town could have its own cable network and you keep saying cable, it's broadband. Uh, broadband. Community huh? owned Excuse broadband. Me, broadband. Yeah, right. That's good a thing new, I got her. New technology. Shall I continue? Keep me honest. Should I continue? Go ahead, I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, okay. 
We've been writing about Georgia's HB 282 for weeks, discussing the lively impact from limiting who can build internet networks in communities that have the most basic internet connections. When the bill finally hit the House floor, it failed in a bipartisan vote of 70 ayes to 94 nays. Many, many groups helped to educate the public and make sure many were informed about this legislation as it made its way through the House, through the Georgia House. And then they have more full coverage. Yesterday, CBS Atlanta ran another segment on this story, noting the overblown promises Windstream was making despite being unable to fulfill them, video below. We will be running more stories on Georgia as we continue to cover the grassroots effort to protect local authority over this matter and continue to educate elected officials about community-owned networks. This is the second year in a row we saw Georgia consider a bill to limit local authority in this matter, and we expect to see it again. We hope people in all 50 states are taking some time to tell their elected officials what they think about their access to the Internet and making sure that whenever a decision is made, it be made by the community without unnecessary barriers imposed by states or Washington, D.C. Yeah. So. Well, again, it's time for you people out there in America to start waking up and uh, now the big corporations that control the cable completely uh, dominate everything that you do on the internet. They can reroute, if you're trying to find information and they don't want you to have it, they can reroute you all kinds of places and deceive you and keep the truth from you. And um, if, you, if you're putting out too much truth on your cable, uh, through your cable thing, they can limit people that come to you. Um, the internet right now is being so controlled that we want to get it back in the hands of the people and local networks would be the way to go. Um, just like we want, uh, we believe that public access should be countywide, not little town by little town by little town. Everybody in the county should be knowing what's going on in their county in the, in the town next to them. Just like you have a county recorder. Right. Just like you have a county recorder. Yeah. Only a county recorder don't record. We've tried that too. Yeah. You know, we brought our um, Declaration of Independence down. Uh, go ahead. You can pack. take on yeah, right. Nina. Go ahead. Go get her. Nina Pastor Pack wouldn't take our Declaration of Independence. You know, think about it. A county recorder is supposed to record your free will act and deeds. It's up to you what you decide your free will act and deed is going to be. If there's something wrong with the document, then let it get brought out in court. Now you go down to these to these clerks, and they're sitting there reading your paperwork, and then making phone calls and deciding whether they can file it or not. Something and, and, is really wrong with this. And picture. not just that, the, the the Declaration of Independence that we had, we put in in two of our court cases. So when we submitted them into the court case, they became on the public record, and they got court stamps on them. Now they weren't just paperwork. They were actual legal documents. But Nina Pastor Pack wouldn't take it. Right. Say it again. Nina Pastor Pack wouldn't take our paperwork. <laughs> just... Now, th this woman has not given honest service. We hire, when we hire public officials, we hire them to do specific jobs. Now, those jobs are laid out and there's rules for those jobs. The rule for Nina Pastor Pack as a clerk is to file paperwork and not to decide, well, I don't like your paperwork, and if you're not a lawyer, we're not going to put your paperwork in, so only lawyers can now file papers. And uh, she's supposed to file anything that you bring, if it's a especially if it's a legal document. And our Declaration of Independence, with two court stamps, was a legal document, well. and she refused to uh, record it. 
Okay, there's two things going here, ladies and gentlemen. Either it was a legal document or it's not a legal document. If it's not a legal document, what were we doing in Hurley Court? What are you doing in the Woodside, uh, Woodstock Justice Court? Woodstock Town Court. So either, right. either way you look at it, it's not looking good. So now, remember Bill Windsor said that judges, prosecutors, lawyers are not held accountable, and he wants to talk about addressing that. By the way, I call Bill Windsor sort of a corporate Joe Barton because he got, when, he, when he ran into the injustice of the system, he was used to being a CEO and starting up businesses, so he decided he, he started up lawlessamerica.com, and uh, he got a lot of attention. But I think he could even learn from Rod Class some of the moves yeah, yeah. we've been he learning needs, lately. He needs to study Rod Class, but it, you really, you people out there should definitely go to lawlessamerica.com and check out a lot of what Bill Windsor's saying. We played that on an earlier show that uh, you people down in New York, when you see this show, you're, you're not going to see that right before this, but check out Bill Windsor, lawlessamerica.com and he's saying a lot of the same stuff that we've been saying but um he looks nice and clean and he's in a suit and well shaven uh, a well tr well well trimmed beard um but right on on everything he's saying yeah he's very stand up especially his stuff on child protective services you people out there who've had your kids taken should go to bill windsor a lawless America, and see the stuff that he's saying about Child Protective Services. You also should check out Rod Class on Child Protective Services. Tell him how to get to Rod Class. R-O-D-C-L-A-S-S, -S, Rod Class. Uh, and that's Bill Windsor. And, they, and, and interestingly, Bill Windsor is also from North Carolina, and so is Rod Class. Yeah. So and we're hoping by next week we're going to have some real interesting shows for you. Are we out? No, no. we're not yet. Okay. We're, we're going to bring Rod Class is coming up to do shows with us, and uh, we're going to do a whole bunch of shows and bring you stuff, some of the best legal stuff available. We've been researching it for a long time, and any of you people who learned from the research that I was giving you, you're going to be amazed at the stuff when we put up the Rod Class stuff here. Um, he's done much more research and knows it better than I do. Um, so we want you people to stay tuned because in, in a few weeks we'll be running the Rod Class stuff for all you people out there and it's a real education for you. Um, so we also would like to go back to, we want to free all marijuana prisoners. We don't want any more going in. We want the Woodstock police to stop arresting kids for joints. And um, it's time for us to say good night for Pot Talk TV. And thank you people for tuning in. Well, you've been watching Pot Talk TV. Hi. We're your local high speed internet and cable provider. Are you looking for a fast, reliable internet connection? A large selection of your favorite HD TV channels? with 24-7 access to the best customer support technicians, all at a fair price? Fuck you. You'll take what we give you. You'll have the option of choosing from several of our completely unwarranted rip-offs, including internet speeds up to 200 times slower than Korea, at twice the price, TV packages with over 500 channels, 90% of what you can view, and we guarantee a plethora of hidden fees. Then, our barely trained technicians will come to install your services somewhere between the hours of 8 a.m. and 10 p.m., knock once while you're in the shower, and promptly leave. And once we do finally get your service up and running, it'll be down and limping within three hours. Indefinitely. Why, you ask? Simple. We are part of what is called an oligopoly. It's like a monopoly, only legal. See, in closed door meetings with four or five of the other major providers, we've secretly agreed not to have differing prices, allowing us to completely eliminate any competition and collectively raise our prices to optimum cockbag levels. Because we here at your local high-speed internet and cable provider don't believe in customer satisfaction. We believe in money. Pools of money. Looking for a better deal? You can oligobble down our balls. You're paying for it. Your local high-speed internet and cable provider. You won't like it, and there's no other option. Starring Joe Barton. Also starring Paula Gloria. 
Be sure to tune in next week at this same time on this same channel for more Hot Talk TV.